Okay, so we want you to have your tangent line and then the line from the center to that line. What you need to do is you need to take your protractor and you need to measure the angle. Now, if you're unsure of how to do that, um, yours has a little circle in the uh, in, on the straight side. It has a little circle on it. Uh, mine here has... Um, I'm just going to line up this edge and the um, middle part of it here. I'm going to line that up with the tangent line. Okay, so you're, um, there should be a little hole on the straight edge of your protractor. Put that on the point where the tangent line meets the line inside the circle. Okay, put it right there and then measure that angle. See. Um, where those line up, see if you can figure out what the angle measure of that angle is, um, where the tangent line meets the line in the center of the circle. Okay, check it for all three and see if they agree. You may need to kind of use the ruler to extend the center of the circle so you can see exactly what the angle measure is. Anybody need help using the protractor? Okay, every time there's a tangent line to a circle, then it is going to be perpendicular to a radius. Okay, so if a line, the blanks here are if a line is tangent to a circle, if and only if it is perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangent C. So that means where the tangent line meets the circle. Okay, the point of tangent C is where the tangent line meets the circle. So that if and only if means that if they tell you the line is tangent to the circle, then you know it forms a right angle. Or if they tell you that a right angle is formed, you know it's a tangent line. Okay, so it goes both ways. It doesn't matter whether you know that it's a tangent line or whether you know it forms a 90 degree angle, then you know the other point of that is true. Okay, so tangent lines are perpendicular to a circle. They form a right angle with a radius. Okay, so let's use that property here. Number two, we've got a figure. It says if line L is tangent to the circle O at point A, that means we need to go in here and we need to put a right angle right there at point A because it says L is tangent to circle O at point A. That means that at A, we've got a right angle with that radius. It says if the radius of the circle is 4 inches, so the radius is which segment? OA, AB, or OB? Which one's the radius? AO, that's the radius. So that is 4 inches. And they say AB is 3 inches. What is the length of BO? Well, how would we find that? I know we've got a big circle, but what other shape do we have in here? A triangle. Not only a triangle, but a right triangle. So what can we use with right triangles? Pythagorean theorem. 3 and 4 are the legs. So 3 squared plus 4 squared equals C squared. So this is the easy form of the Pythagorean theorem. 3 squared plus 4 squared gives us 25. So that means that BO is 5 inches. Okay, part B, 
same figure, just different conditions. If AB is 5 centimeters, so we're going to label AB with 5 centimeters, AO is 12 centimeters, and BO is 13 centimeters, why is it correct to conclude that line L must be tangent to the circle at point A? So notice this question started a little bit different. This question didn't tell us that line L was tangent to the circle. Okay, we can't use what they said in part A. Part B is completely different. They just start by giving us lengths. Well, if line L is tangent, then there's a right angle formed there. If there's a right angle formed there, then those measurements should fit the Pythagorean theorem. Let's see if they do. Let's plug them in. 5 squared plus 12 squared we want to know, is that equal to 13 squared? I put a little question mark over my equal sign because I don't know for sure or not. I'm going to test it. 5 squared plus 12 squared is 169. And guess what? That's what 13 squared is. So they are equal to each other. So it is correct to conclude that line L is tangent to the circle at point A because... The measurements satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. Therefore, angle OAB is a right angle. Put a little perpendicular sign there. You can't really tell. <coughs> That's supposed to be a B. It doesn't really look like a B. Okay, so if they ask you, is this line tangent to the circle? you've got to check the Pythagorean theorem based on the measurements that they give you, okay? Um, now, let me point out something, something that I've seen on a lot of questions. A lot of times, um, they won't necessarily give you all of OB. They won't give you that entire measurement. They may put another point right here and say that that part is 1, okay? But it's just using the properties of circles that it doesn't matter where you draw a radius, it has the same length. So from O to that point that I put in there would also be 12 because it's just another radius. So then 12 plus 1 gives us 13 for that entire segment. You may have to use an idea like that. I just wanted to point that out. Okay? Um, so you just need to be able to recognize when another radius has been drawn. Okay? All right, now there is another property that we need to look at here. It says, suppose you're given that um, segment PA and PB are tangent to a circle. So as soon as you see that word tangent, you need to put a right angle where that segment touches the circle. So at angle A is a right angle, at angle B is a right angle. To help prove that segment PA is congruent to uh, segment PB, an auxiliary line segment, okay, uh, OA, OB, and OP are drawn. So it's saying that those aren't really what we're trying to prove, but they're going to help us prove that, okay? Um, it says, how could you use congruent triangles to prove that segment PA is congruent to segment PB? So let's think about what else is congruent in this picture, okay? OA and OB are congruent. Why? Why are OA and OB congruent to each other? Okay, well, do we know for sure that it cuts it in the middle? What are OA and OB? Well, we have our angles at A and B, 
but I heard somebody say it. They're both radii. Yeah, they're both radii. OA is a radius, OB is a radius. All radii in a circle are congruent. So OA is congruent to OB. Um, PO is a shared side. If we look at this as two different triangles here, PO is the exact same length in both of these triangles. Uh, that's something that we call the reflexive property. It's congruent to itself. Well, duh. Everything's congruent to itself. Um, so we have two out of the three legs of a right triangle. Well, if we have two out of the three legs of a right triangle, can we find the third? If we have those measurements? Yeah, if you've got two out of the three legs of a right triangle, you can find the third one. Um, so we could find the measure of PA if we have the measurements of those two other ones. Well, those two measurements are the exact same thing for the other triangle. So um, these sides, PA and PB, they have to be congruent to each other because you've got two right triangles that have the same hypotenuse, they have one of the same legs, that third or that second leg has to be the same, okay? So PA is congruent to PB, and this is another property. Tangent lines from an exterior point. P is our exterior point here, okay? Exterior, outside, okay? Just use, <coughs> just because it's in geometry doesn't mean it means something different. Um, that is the exterior point there. Point P. It's not inside the circle, it's not on the circle, it's outside of the circle. Okay? So from that circle, those are two tangent lines there. So segments drawn, um, tangent, segments drawn tangent to a circle from an exterior point are congruent. Okay. So I just went through the process of explaining to you why they were congruent. You don't have to go through that process anymore. This is a theorem. You can use it as a true statement from now on. If you know that those two segments are tangent, like they told us, um, it said PA and PB are tangent to the circle, then you can conclude that they are congruent to each other and you can use that property to solve some problems. Okay, so let's use those properties. Um, let's see here. We're going to talk about a satellite orbiting the Earth. The satellite is located in space at point S. In its view of Earth, in the plane of the equator, the angle between the lines of sight at S is 50 degrees. Okay, so at point S, we've got a 50 degree angle right here. And it says the radius of the Earth is 3,963 miles. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so what we're doing here is we're looking at, it's picture looking down on a, on a big globe. You're looking down directly, the North Pole's on the top. Okay, so around the edge. Um, that's the equator. That furthest point out is the equator there. Um, so the radius of the Earth, so from the very center to the point of tangency, is 3,963. 3, okay, so we can put that right there, and we can put it right there as well. Let's read the questions. What is the distance from S to the horizon along the equator. That is the length of a tangent from S to Earth's surface along the equator. So this is what it's asking us for. What's the length of this line right here? Well, if it's tangent, where can we put the right angle? Let me label some points here. Let me label point A. B, where can we draw a right angle? At A and at B, because those are tangent lines. They, tell, they told us those were tangent lines, so we can...